Hello, so lately I have been working on another panel quilt and I wanted to share it with you. This is the Guadalupe panel from the Eleanor collection by Crafty Chica for Riley Blake Designs. It's a fabric panel measuring 36 inches wide and um, by the width of fabric, which is about 42 inches, sometimes 43 inches. It's never totally exact with with the fabric. It varies from manufacturer to manufacturer, but um, I wanted to show you these gorgeous colors and look at this gorgeous print. This is the entire panel. It's just this Our Lady of Guadalupe, just beautiful. So I wanted to make this actually a really easy panel project. You know, I love easy and quick panel projects, but I wanted to make it really fun and accentuate the really bright colors and prints in this fabric line. So the first thing I did was border it with a three and a half inch strip of this texture fabric. This is also from Riley Blake Designs. It's one of their basics. This is the super pink part of the texture basics from Riley Blake Designs designed by Sandy Gervais. And look at that beautiful texture in there. It's really fun. It get, adds a lot of uh, depth and um, just texture to the quilt, which I love especially because this center panel is just very solid. So I like the different texture that this brings. So what I am focusing on in this video is I'm gonna be showing you how to make this prairie, bra prairie braid border. Um, this can be made in many different sizes. Mine's going to be about six and a half inches wide. Um, and you can, you can adjust this to any size. Once you get the feel of how to make it, you can make your strips wider or narrower and longer for any width. So look at that. How fun is that? So today we're going to be making the, the border for the top and bottom. So let's get started. Okay, to make the prairie braid border, I used a Riley Blake um, roly poly, or otherwise known as a jelly roll, or just two and a half inch strips of fabric. You, um, this, they come in pre-cut rolls of two and a half inch strips, or you can cut your own from yardage. And um, what I did then is I cut the roly poly strips into six inch lengths. And then I arrange them by print. So these are all the same print in different colors. And these are, and so you can see I, it's, it's by print. And um, then later I will be um, selecting colors from those little groupings. And then I also cut um, to start, my starter piece is this two and a half inch square and it can be from any print. It doesn't matter. So let me get my iron ready. And I like to, for this project, have my iron really close by so I don't have to keep getting up and down because you're gonna be pressing every time you sew. So to begin, what I did is I just laid out my strips um, that I cut in an order that I think would um, add variety and um, be a good order to sew in. So I'm not wondering if I use that fabric already. All I have to do is select um, the different colors, but not the prints. So I have stripes, then I have text, then I have floral and so on. And so to begin, I, I'm starting with my stripe and you're just gonna match it up with your two and a half inch square. And we're doing quarter inch seam allowances. And we're just gonna sew it right on there. And press. And then next I'm going to go to the text and um, you're not going to go this way. You're going to line it up with your strip that you just sewed on. And so that when you sew it on, it's going to create this V shape with your square being in the middle. So we're just going to line it right up and it, this doesn't have to be perfectly exact. Um, don't fuss too much over it. and then press it open. So the next print in um, my lineup is the floral. And so all I have to decide is which color to use. And I think I'm gonna go with white for 
a contrast in the color since I've got two darker colors. White will add a little bit of contrast. And just like that. So now we're going to press it. And next I have this cute, um, it's like a clothing print. And I remember wearing these tops as a child, so I just love this print. Um, let's go with pink. Okay, and then I'm gonna press, and we're just gonna keep going like this until we have the length that we want. So for this quilt, I already did the super pink um, three and a half inch strip border, which will end up being a three inch border. And I figured for the top and bottom, I need 54 inches um, of braid. Now that takes into account that we are gonna be trimming a straight line here, so right about here. And so you're not going to count this um, uneven part as your length. You're going to start right about here and then determine your length from there. Another way that you could do this instead of just sewing a 54 inch length is just keep on going. Sew 110 inch length and then cut it. Um, it doesn't matter. So, or you could cut, all, you could just sew one long braid for all your sides and then cut them down. Um, into the length that you want. So it, that's totally up to you. Either way, you're gonna be trimming it to the lengths that you want. And let's just start continuing on. Okay, at this point I've gone through all of the prints in the order that I laid them out. So now I'm going to start again with the stripe and I will just use a different color of the stripe. Alright, again I just went through all of the prints in different colors than I used the first time around and now I'm going through again starting with the stripe and again I will just start with a different stripe. So far I've used the black and this, I'm not sure what it, they're calling it but I think it's like a yellow or gold and then um, we'll, we will incorporate this pink stripe and uh, continue going.
Okay, I have this border strip at the length that I want it. So now um, all I need to do is trim the sides and the ends. And I'm going to show you how I do that. The easiest way for me is to fold this on, over on, it, on itself like this. Just line up those angles. And then I fold it one more time. And I am going to be aiming for about six and a half inch wide strip. So this inside corner um, is about a quarter inch in or so is going to be my marker. So let's see if we can get it lined up and see what that looks like. All right. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I am going to trim it right there. Just double, triple check always, making sure that it's all lined up just right. Okay. And the reason why I check again and again is because once you slice, it's sliced. <laughs> so you can't go back. Now I'm gonna go on the other side and measure six and a half inches. And there we go. Okay, and then I'm just going to trim one end of this um, because the other end we can trim off afterwards. We don't need to have the, ex the length, ex length exact. In fact, I know it's longer than it needs to be. All right, so now I'm grabbing my fabric panel and we are going to go ahead and sew the border on. All right, to sew our border, um, you can see I've already got the sides sewn on. And so what I'm going to do is get the top on and I'm just going to line up. And I like to go a little bit longer so that I can trim afterwards. So I would say I'm about a quarter inch over the edge on this side and then we just sew along with a quarter inch seam. All right, so here you see I've got the border all finished and what I'm going to do is take this end which is quite a bit longer and just trim it off there and trim the other end to make it even and then let's go ahead after this and do that last braided trim so you can see it done again. Starting on our second our final border and I've got a little two and a half inch square cut and I'm just gonna start adding on to it so again we're gonna go like this and just line it up and stitch that little square to the six inch strip. So as a reminder, your square is two and a half inch square and your strips are two and a half by six inch. So if you wanted to change the size, if you had a four inch square, you want the width to be four inch and then whatever length that you want. You could do smaller, like a little one inch or one and a half inch, and just make sure the width of this strip is the same width as your square. And then you can really customize it for whatever you're doing. All right, so we have that piece. And then I think we'll add this black floral. And then I'm just gonna go in the same order like I did before, stitch this on. And then once you have that triangle set up, it's just repeat, stitch and press, stitch and press on either side. Okay, let's do this.
Okay, so we have our final border made and now we just need to cut it into a six and a half inch wide strip. So again, I am gonna fold this over onto itself, matching up the points as best I can. Till it fits my cutting mat. And then I'm going to line it up and just make sure that I am within my six and six and a half inch range. Cut one end off. Get rid of all those little scraps. And then I'm going to make sure I line it up again. There's six and a half inches. And there is our strip. So again, I am going to just cut trim down one border, one end of the border. Square it up nicely. And then we will sew that onto our quilt and we're almost done. I have my panel here ready to go. Get it sorted out with this border. And my trimmed end of the border is what I'm going to start with because I know the other end is rough looking and it's going to be too long anyways. So again, I'm going to extend it about a half inch to a quarter inch past the edge just to give myself wiggle room for trimming later. And using a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm just going to sew this border onto the panel quilt. Okay, so once again, I'm going to take this to my cutting board and I'm going to trim right along this edge to get it squared up with this side border. But just look at how gorgeous that is. This shows off all of the vibrant, energetic colors in this fabric collection. This is the, again, the Eleanor collection designed by Crafty Chica. And it is full of energy and just vibrant lively colors and what a perfect way to show these off look at that it's just got a scrappy beautiful look to it and i can't wait to show you how this entire quilt is going to look when it's done i am going to be adding another three inch texture border and that's it and then i'm going to do the binding and call it good it's going to make a nice throw size quilt that will measure about uh, let's see i think it's going to be about 56 by 60 inches Okay, so you may be wondering how I um, do my simple strip borders. And uh, my method is the littlest math possible. So I figure out um, how many inches are my length and width of the fabric, uh, the quilt that I need to add a border to. And then I figure out how many strips of fabric I will need. And instead of coming up with an exact measurement, say for the length, say this is 50 inches, 
I'm not going to cut a 50 inch strip because if I'm even a half inch short, then I'm in trouble for that whole length. So instead, what I do is I cut one long strip of all my strips. So this was six strips of three and a half inch wide by width of fabric. And I sew them together. And then I just, as you see, I just sew along. And when I get to the end, I snip off past the edge just a little bit. And then I keep going to the other side. So I do the sides first and then I do the top and bottom. And um, then when I get to this point, I will just grab a ruler at the end and I can just trim that flush. And I'll do that on each side. So we'll just trim this flush. Easy. That way I'm not doing a lot of math and I'm also not worrying if I'm going to be a little bit short on that border. That has happened to me in the past and there's nothing more frustrating than getting to this point and having to unpick a whole strip because you, you just were half inch short of the fabric or just a tiny bit short. Um, so this is it. This is as easy as it is and um, I hope you enjoyed the prairie braid what one thing that i love about it just like the other panel borders that i like to do is that it's very forgiving so you can make this as long or short as you want or as wide or narrow as you want for any quilt that you're working on you could make this prairie braid extra wide for a table runner even and just not even use it as a border but let it stand alone so um very easy and gorgeous way to show off a lot of prints and pre-cut friendly. If you have a, a jelly roll or a roly poly that you want to use up, this is a great way to use it up. All right, I'm going to get this quilted and show you the finished, finished product.